Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a gaming PC build for $500. So there are a lot of different kind of price points that you can build a gaming PC at. So at the higher end, I've done a $3,000 build before, which is just ridiculous. It's overkill for most people, but if you want to game on a ton of monitors, it's a great way to go. Likewise, if you want something a little bit more normal, you can go with a $1,000 build, which will pretty much max out any kind of game you throw at it. However, if you don't have $1,000 to spend, the $500 build that I'm about to show you is actually an excellent choice. To kick our build off, we're going to be using an Intel Core i3-2120 CPU. Now a lot of people give the Core i3 a bad rap, however actually it is a really great CPU if you're on a budget and you want to build a really nice gaming computer. This features dual cores clocked at 3.3GHz, and it also comes with hyper-threading, which allows Windows to see it as a quad-core CPU. Now while sure, some games can't actually fully take advantage of a quad-core CPU, however you'd be surprised how many will do just fine on the dual-core Core i3. For $122, this is an excellent start for our build. Moving on, we're going to be using the Gigabyte H61 DS2 motherboard. Now while this motherboard is very cheap, that does not mean that it's lacking performance. You're still going to be able to get all you can out of both your graphics card and your CPU, and that's really the most important thing in a budget build like this. You'll find four SATA ports, which can be used for hard drives, DVD drives, and anything else you want to plug in. And also, since it's a gigabyte board, it comes with dual BIOS. A BIOS is what runs the entire motherboard, so if this goes, you're pretty much your entire motherboard is ruined. And believe me, I've actually killed a computer by flashing a bad BIOS to it before, so having a backup BIOS that if anything goes wrong, the motherboard will automatically revert to it is a great feature. You are missing a few bells and whistles, including USB 3 as well as SATA 3. However, for $50, this will absolutely get the job done. For a graphics card, we're going to be using a Sapphire Radeon HD 7770. Now that this has come down in price, it's an absolutely excellent card for a budget build. Not only is it fast, quiet, and cool, but it also is not going to break the bank. This card comes with 1GB of GDDR5 memory, and since it's the GHz edition, that means that the core clock is over 1GHz. Now while this is not going to go blow away your GTX 680, it definitely means that it will deliver some really stellar performance. As one of the latest AMD cards built on their new 28nm process, this means that not only will it be fast, but it also is going to run really quietly and it's not going to suck up a ton of power. For $120 after mail-in rebate, the performance of this card should be perfect for our build. For memory, we're going to be using 4GB of PNY Optima RAM. Now 4GB, while it's not a ton, it's going to be more than enough to handle pretty much any game that you throw at it. On top of that, since it's clocked at 1333 MHz, which is pretty much as fast as this motherboard can handle, that means it's going to be a really good fit for our build. Best of all, it's only going to run us $25 for the dual channel kit. For a hard drive, we're going to be using a 500GB Western Digital Caviar Blue Drive. Now while I'm a big fan of SSDs, for this build, our normal hard drive makes a lot more sense. With 500GB of capacity to work with, that's going to be plenty of room for all your Steam games, pictures, media, photos, all that kind of stuff will fit on the drive no problem. And since it is a 7200 RPM drive, that means it's going to be pretty snappy. Again, not quite as fast as an SSD, but you have more like 500GB to work with as opposed to 60. For $70, another great addition to our build. For a power supply, we're going to be using a 500W Cooler Master Extreme Power Plus. With 500W of capacity, this is going to be more than enough for our build. Now on top of that, there's plenty of overhead where if you ever want to add additional hard drives, more fans, LEDs, all that kind of stuff, it can handle it no problem. For $40, this will work great in our build. For a case, we're going to be using the Antec 300. Now this has been my favorite budget case for quite a while now. For starters, it's a full-size case, which means that there's plenty of room for a full-size motherboard, full-size graphics cards, lots of hard drives, all that kind of stuff will fit in the case no problem. But on top of that, it has very good airflow. And while none of our parts are particularly extreme, so nothing's going to be just pouring tons and tons of heat out compared to anything else, the Antec 300 can absolutely handle everything we've got to throw at it and more. For only $55, a great way to go. The last part in our build is a Sony DVD burner. Now this part is optional. If you wanted to, you could ditch it, or you could instead go with a Blu-ray drive. I generally do recommend to grab a DVD drive at least though, as they're pretty cheap and it makes installing Windows and various other programs easier, and of course it's nice to sometimes watch a DVD or, you know, use a CD if you've ever heard one of those before. Of course, like I said though, you can skip this, but otherwise it will cost you about $18. Lastly, you may want to consider picking up a copy of Windows 7 Home Premium. Now I'm not going to be doing this with this build, as instead I'm going to be doing a copy of Windows 8, however it can come in handy if you don't want to deal with a beta or anything like that. If you do want to go with Windows 7, it will be an additional $100, but again, you can't go ahead and just use Windows 8 and buy that once it does come out. So what's the damage? As of recording this video, this entire build will cost you $499.34. See, I told you it was a $500 build. Anyway, definitely do keep in mind that prices are constantly fluctuating, usually going down, so I have links to everything in the description of this video. Anyway guys, if you want to see the full tutorial on how to put this computer together, I will have an annotation right here. On top of that, I'll also be giving this computer away, so actually it'll be a couple of weeks from now, but as soon as the video is live, the annotation will be right beside me here.
Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to leave it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this, including the giveaway, be sure to subscribe.